Um, the issue of commitment came up for us in conversation today. The commitment I speak of is the commitment that accompanies the creative act that asks for nothing less than everything. Now this can play out um, in, a, in, a, in a creative incubator while making music or writing songs, but it can also be the creative act of surfing a wave or hurling yourself off a mountain at 50 miles per hour on a mountain bike. There is, again, a moment of commitment or a, a leap of faith, a trust fall that asks for nothing less than everything. And we can only know wholeness, I believe, through the enactment of this commitment. Only through full commitment can we know wholeness, even though the price is nothing less than everything, and it asks for nothing less than everything. Most of us don't live as if we can't take it back. Every one of our actions is neutered by, uh, by, by an emergency exit. There's always a hinge that we can pull and parachute ourselves from this experience, and so we don't actually live in full commitment at all. Even when we marry, there's a divorce clause. There's always a way out. There's always a way to take it back. But I think the people who live more fully, tragic stories as they are, are often people who live as if there's no turning back. For every moment is dying to who you were. The full commitment asks for nothing less than everything. And it, 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 for me today, it played out riding a bicycle while listening to music, while ecstatically receiving the sky, wanting to lick the sky. And, and what happened was annihilatory. It was like a fusion of two atoms. What, was, what were discrete and separate elements, you know, the bicycle, the ride, myself, and the song playing, were all fused together. And action and awareness became one thing. I was fully committed and there was no turning back. It asked for nothing less than everything. But in retrospect, I felt more alive in that moment than I usually do. But I also realized that in that moment, I was no longer in control. Right? Something else was going through me. It wasn't from me, and though it was with me, it belonged not to me. But I felt ecstatic in its surrender. I felt captured by its grace. Right? I actually felt liberated by commitment. Most of us, we step over to the ledge. We go to the edge of the ledge, and we consider the possibility, but we're always able to tiptoe back. There's always a, a harness or a hinge. There's a way of saying, I'll kind of dip my toe in, but I always reserve the right of admission. I always reserve the right to take it back. And what happens is we kind of live a half-life, right? The, the truly brave and bold amongst us are the ones that hurl themselves off mountains wearing wingsuits. They put everything on the table. They're raising the stakes and they're living like it matters. And they probably are privy to rhapsodies that most of us will never know. And the sadness of that is that We'll never know what it's like to be Jimi Hendrix doing his guitar solo while peaking on acid in a moment of ecstatic ego death. We'll never know what it's like to hurl ourselves off airplanes while skydiving until we do so. And if you cannot submit, friends, you cannot die. And if you cannot die, you cannot be reborn. And so the commitment, unfortunately, is required. The price of entry asks for nothing less than everything. If you want a creative life, if you want exquisite surrender, if you want ecstatic catharsis, you're going to have to hurl yourself on the cross. You're going to have to hang yourself on the cross and willingly die again and again and again. And this is from the guy that fears death, you know, is, is the guy that fears death. The guy who never danced at parties realizes that the pleasure to be found when dancing at parties, because serious times call for furious dancing, is, is, a, is, a, is a space I've never tasted. You know, it's a space I sometimes, I sometimes get a whiff off, a per perfume from in these brief interludes of surrender. But I, I recoil back into myself and I'm like a PTSD patient, you know, in a hypervigilant stupor, you know, oscillating between boredom and anxiety when what he really wants to do is make the commitment, right? Because as McKenna said, nature loves courage. The irony of all this hesitation is that nature loves courage. You make the commitment and nature responds to that commitment by removing impossible obstacles. You Dream the impossible dream and the world will not grind you under, it will lift you up, they say. This is the secret. What all the philosophers, professors, what the wise men knew, what they understood. The alchemical gold, right? The shamanic dance in the waterfall. This is how magic is done. You hurl yourself into the abyss and you realize that it's a feather bed. 
Easier said than done, no doubt. But this is the truth from which nothing can dislodge us. At the end of the day, we know it to be true, friends. That, that the commitment is, 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 is non-negotiable. That if you haven't, um, if you, yeah, if you haven't um, fully committed, uh, you haven't lived a life of, at all. What do you think, Edgar? <laughs> no, for sure, yeah. True, uh, true commitment. Yeah. Uh, yeah. True commitment uh, has no way, has no turning back. That's, that's the point. That's a true commitment. Correct. When you don't. When you can't. Back. Correct. When you t when you take the dose. Yes. It's uh, the effects yes. are start to show it themselves, yes. and you're like, no, yes. no, no, no. That's correct. I don't want to do this anymore. That's I, correct. I changed my mind, but that's hey, that. hey, look. Yes. I'm sorry, you're yes. just going to have to ride it out. You know? Yes, <laughs> correct. The only way out is through, breakdown to breakthrough. Yeah. You know, when I took a lesson in free diving in Tulum, you know, free diving is the act of holding your breath and then down regulating your nervous system when the panic impulse kicks in and the resistance and the fear and the gasping and grasping for air, right? And it's, and it's an involuntary reflex. It's a survival mechanism, stepping off from the ledge, getting up for air. Air. And what they teach you eventually is to learn to literally downregulate your nervous system and your panic response and to push through thresholds where you experience a kind of psychological death. The final exercise in the free diving class required going down, stabilizing, and then going underneath this cave structure that was like, I don't know, maybe two or three meters long. It wasn't very far, but it was a full commitment in the sense that once you decided to go for it, there was a point where the other end was closer than going back. But there was, there was a feeling that you might not be able to hold your breath that long, even though the instructor is there to make sure you are physiologically able to, but you still push through a threshold where you feel like you've hit your limit. You really haven't, but you feel like you have. And when you realize there's no turning back, there's a kind of transcendence, because when you finally commit to it, and you realize that you're going to go for it even if I don't know that I'll make it, right? You believe that illusion and you push through anyway, right? You think you might die and you do it anyway. And only in that moment of total commitment, when everything is laid on the line psychologically, do you transcend yourself. And when you come out, oh my God, it's DMT released all over the brain. It's absolutely ecstatic. The instructor was like, okay, Jason, just float in the water and look at the sky. Like you just crossed a threshold. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it, it is this that we're all trying to do in our lives. I mean, this is what we're all talking about. This is what the wellness movement is about and the breath work and the psychedelics and the healing and the coming into wholeness. This is what we're all doing. This is what we're all talking about. This is what's become in vogue. It's like, how do we make ourselves whole? Well, friends, again, I think it comes from realizing that we've got to commit. We've got to leap. We've got to trust, right? And this is the only way. Only way. The only way. There is no other way. Yeah. It, it, this is the way. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. So, thanks for listening. And may you bring commitment and wherewithal and courage um, into all facets of your life. <laughs>